celebration of the Lord's Passion. On Good Friday this year, our liturgical service streamed online enables us to commemorate with spiritual devotion the crucifixion and death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As the Gospel Passion narrative is devoutly sung, we can reflect upon the core mysteries of his suffering and death leading to the hope of salvation. Today's service consists of three parts. We listen to the word of scripture that reveal the true meaning of our Lord's suffering and death and respond with special prayers for universal needs. The cross of Christ crucified is unveiled for spiritual veneration. In the third part, since families are participating from home, a suitable prayer will lead us into a personal spiritual reception of Holy Communion. The presiding priest, Father Joel Pinto, and co-celebrants are about to enter into the church sanctuary in total silence. On our behalf, they will humbly lie prostrate before the veiled cross. During this solemn gesture, we recall in our hearts God's abundant love for all humanity in and through his beloved Son, Jesus. Let us all pray in silence. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection sanctify your servants, from whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Isaiah Pravadecha Pustakantle Vasab Uleya Muzo Sevak Sufal Zatalo To Varto Zatalo Ani Vunna Tek Pautalo Zashe Zaito Lok Taka Pholeun Thatak Zalo To Itlo Vidrup Zalo Ki Taka Munsha Che Rup Natle Tashe Zaitya Rashtrang To Vizmit Kartalo आणि 
रायताचे मुखार तोंड दंपून रावतले कित्याक केदेंस सांगूंक ना ते तांकां पळोवंक मेळतले आणि केदेंस आयकूंक ना ते तांकां कळीत जातले आम्ही आयकला तो कोण सत्मा दित सर्वेस परस हो बावळो कोणा उगडा पोजला ताच्या दोळ्या मुखार तो एका तरण्या झाडा भाषेन वाढलो सुके खरडे बुंतेल्या पाळा सारखो आम्ही ताजेर नदर गलिशी करू ताका स्वरूपाय नातली आकर्षण नातले आमची काळजा ताजेशी ओडूंक ताका कसलेही सोबाय नातली कोणेच ताजी परवा करूंक ना मनशांनी ताका पैस केलो तुकीसो मनीस तो कष्ट सोसून अनुभव असलो जांचे मुखार आम्ही आमचे तोंड लिपयता तांचे मतलो एकलो तो मनशांनी ताची बेपर्वा केली आणि आम्ही ताका लेखलो ना खरेच आमचे कष्ट ताणे भोगले आमच्या दुखीसो भार ताणे घेतलो जास्त बघून असलो देवान मार देऊन सतयलो म्हणून आम्ही ताचे विषयी चिंतल्या पण आमच्या अपराधांक लागून ताका विकलो आमच्या पातकांक लागून तो चिरडालो ताचेर पडुल्या कस्ती वरवी आमकां शांती मेळली ताच्या गया वरवी आम्ही बोरी जाल्या आम्ही सगळी शिड्या भाषेन शिमटोन गेल्या खरेकल्या आपापली वाट धरली पण आम्हा सोमेज त्यांच्या अपराधांचो भार सर्वेस्परान ताचेर घालो ताका निष्ठुरायन सलयलो तरी तो कलतो झालो ताणे आपले तोंड उघडले ना मारूंक उरता तसल्या शेळये बरी लो तसल्या मुखार ओगेस रावतेल्या बोकऱ्या बरी ताणे आपले तोंड उघडले ना ताचेर जबरदस्ती केली फॉर्माण मारले आणि ताका धरून बेलो पण ताची गत उणाक पडून गेली जे तरेच्या देशान तो ताका उमटून काढलो आणि ताच्या लोकांच्या गुन्ह्यांक लागून ताका मरणाची शिक्षा लायली ताणे कांच वाईट करूंक ना आणि ताच्या तोंडातले फोटकिरे उतर केदींस भायर सरूंक ना तरी नष्ट्या मनशा सोवे ताका एक फोन दिलो क्रेस्त सोवे ताका एक समाधी दिली कष्टा दगतानी ताका चिरडूंक सर्वेस्पराक बोरेन दिसले आपले जिवीत पातकाचे परिपूर्ण दिवंक तो भेटयता जाल्यार आपल्या संततीक पळेवंक ताका फावो जातले आणि लांब आवक ताका मेळतले ताशे उदेशी सर्वेस्पराची खुशी सुपळ जाताली हे वळवळे सुसुल्या उपरांत तो उजवाड देखतालो आपल्या जाणवाये वरवी तो संतुष्ट जातालो नितीवन म्हजो सेवाक जायत्यांक नितीवन करतालो तांच्या अपराधां सोपार तो आपणाचेर घेतालो देखून वरत्या मनशा मध्ये हांव ताका तसो भाग दितालो आणि पदवेदारा मध्ये तो लोट वांडतालो कित्याक ताणे आपणाक मरणाच्या अधीन केलो आणि अपराध्या मधलो एकलो कसो ताका लेखलो जायत्यांच्या पातका सो फार ताणे आपणाचेर घेतलो आणि अपराध्या पासून ताणे विनंती केली देवाचे उदार देवाचे उदार So oh. 
वर्णातून तार तारावयास तो समर्थ आहे त्याच्याजवळ त्याने आपल्या देवास्थेच्या दिवसात मोठा आक्रोश करीत व अश्रू गाळीत प्रार्थना व विनवणी केली आणि ती त्याच्या सद्भक्तीमुळे ऐकण्यात आली तो पुत्र असूनही त्याने जे दुःख सोसले तेने करून तो आज्ञाधारकपणा शिकला आणि परिपूर्ण केला जाऊन तो आपल्या आज्ञेत राहणाऱ्या सर्वांच्या युगानुगीच्या कारणाचा कर्ता झाला हा प्रभूचा शब्द आहे प्लीज राईस फॉर द पॉसिबल passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John Jesus went forth with his disciples across the Kidron Valley where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered now Judas who betrayed him also knew the place for Jesus had often met there with his disciples so Judas procuring a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priest and the Pharisees went there with lanterns and torches and weapons then Jesus knowing all that was to befall him came forward and said to them who do you think they answered him jesus of nazareth jesus of nazareth jesus said to them I am he. Judas who betrayed him was standing with them. When he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who do you see? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let this man go. The 
This was to fulfill the word which he had spoken of those whom thou gavest me I lost not one Then Simon Peter having a sword drew it and struck the high priest slave and cut off his right ear The slave's name was Malchus Jesus said to Peter Put your soul into a sheep Shall I not drink The cup which my father had given me So the band of soldiers and their captain And the officers of the Jews See Jesus and bound him First they led him to Annas for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas who was high priest that year It was Caiaphas who had given counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people Simon Peter followed Jesus and so did another disciple As this disciple was known to the high priest he entered the court of the high priest along with Jesus while Peter stood outside at the door so the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to the maid who kept the door and brought Peter in the maid who kept the door said to Peter Are not you also one of this man's disciples He answered I am not Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing and warming themselves Peter also was with them standing and warming himself The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching Jesus answered him I have spoken openly to the world I have also taught in synagogue and in the temple where all Jews come together i have said nothing secretly why do you ask me ask those who have heard me what i said to them they know what i said When he had said this one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand exclaiming Is that how you answer the high priest Jesus answered him I have spoken wrongly bear witness to the wrong but if I have spoken rightly Why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They said to him, "Aren't you also one of his disciples?" Aren't you also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a king's man of the man, whose ear Peter had cut off, insisted, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it and at once the cock crowed Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the praetorium 
it was early they themselves did not enter the praetorium so that they might not be defiled but might eat the passover so pilate went out to them and said what accusation do you bring against this man they answered him if this man were not an evil doer we would not have handed him over if this man were not an evil doer we would not have handed him over pilate said to them take him yourselves and judge him by your own law the jew said to him it is not lawful for us to put any man to death it is not lawful for us to put any man to death this was to fulfill the word which jesus had spoken to show by what that he was to die pilate entered the praetorium again and called jesus and said to him are you the king of the jews jesus answered do you say this of your own accord or did others say it to you about me Pilate answered Am I am a Jew your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me what have you done Jesus answered my kingship is not of this world If my kingship were of this world my servant would fight that I might not be handed over to the Jews but my kingship is not from the world Pilate said to him So you are a king Jesus answered You say that I am a king for this I was born and for this I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth everyone who is the truth yours my voice pilate said to him what is truth after he had said this he went out to the jews again and told them i find no crime in him but you have a custom that i should release one man for you at the passover will you have be released for you the king of the jews they cried out again not this man but barabbas not this man but barabbas now barabbas was a robber then pilate took jesus and scourged him and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe they came up to him saying hail king of the jews Hail king of the Jews and they struck him with their hands Pilate went out again 
and said to them Behold I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no crime in him So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe Pilate said to them Your is the man When the chief priest and the officers saw him they cried out Crucify him Crucify him Crucify him Crucify him Pilate said to them Take him your sins and crucify him for I find no crime in him The Jews answered him We have a law and by that law he ought to die because he has made himself the son of God We have a law and by that law he ought to die because he has made himself the son of god when pilate heard these words he was the more afraid he entered the praetorium and said to jesus where are you from but jesus gave no answer Pilate therefore said to him You will not speak to me do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you Jesus answered You would have no power over me unless it has been given from above therefore he who delivered me to you as the greater sin upon this pilate sought to release him but the jews kept shouting if you release this man You are not Caesar's friend everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar If you release this man you are not Caesar's friend everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar When Pilate heard these words he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement and in Hebrew Gabbatha Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover it was about the 6th hour he said to the Jews Here is your king they cried out Away with him away with him crucify him crucify him away with him away with him crucify him crucify him Pilate said to them Shall I crucify your king The chief priest answered We have no king but Caesar We have no king but Caesar Then he handed him over to them to be crucified So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull which is in Hebrew Golgotha there they crucified him and with him two others one on either side and Jesus between them Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross it read 
Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priest of the Jews then said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for its soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom, so they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but let us cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. Let, let us not tear it, it, but let, let us cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did this. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clophus, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said in fulfillment of scripture, I a bowl full of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on his hip and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of the preparation, in order to prevent the bodies from remaining on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, 
they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it as bone witness, his testimony is true. And he knows that he tells the truth that you all so may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. No the bone of him shall be broken. And again another scripture says they shall look on him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly free for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he may take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave, so he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who had at first come to him by night, came bringing a mixture of more and aloes, about a hundred pounds weight. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden and in the garden a new tomb where no one had ever been laid. Because of the Jewish day of preparation, as the tomb was close at hand, there they laid Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, few minutes from now the cross will be unveiled and the priest will call out to you, behold the wood of the cross on which hung the savior of the world. And my dear brothers and sisters, at that moment our gaze will be on the crucifix our grace will be on Jesus on the cross. Dear brothers and sisters, we are not come here only to celebrate the history, but we are come here today to look deeper at this historical event, look deeper in the mystery, look deeper in the passion and death of Jesus. When we look at the cross, when we gaze at the cross and we focus on the cross, there is lot to learn and ponder about. But my dear brothers and sisters, my focus today are on two things. First, the cross reminds us of God's intense love. And the intense love of God has two aspects. The first, 
God's love is so intense that he allowed his son to die that he allowed his son to be killed his love is so intense that he did not spare his son so that you and I may be saved this is a true story of a man named Hansley in the year 1937 in US Hansley worked for the railways and his job was to monitor the railroad bridge that was over a river so if a big boat or a ship passed he had to open the bridge and then if there was an approaching train he had to close the bridge one day he took his eight-year-old child along with him at his workplace while the child was playing he happened to be playing on the railway track when the time came for Hansley to close the bridge for the approaching train he realized that his eight-year-old son was stuck in the gears that were operating the bridge at this moment Hansley was in a dilemma if he pushed the liver and allowed the train to pass by his son will be crushed to death but if he runs to save his son the approaching train has 400 passengers and all will be dead at that moment Hansley had to make a decision he pushed the liver the train with 400 passengers passed by but his eight-year-old son was crushed to that death to save the passengers he sacrificed his son and the passengers in the train who were saved were both good and bad unholy and saintly my dear brothers and sisters likewise God allowed Jesus to be crushed under the weight of the cross so that you and I and all may be saved good bad saintly unholy and that is the intensity of God's love the second aspect of God's intense love is that God respects our freedom did God not know that Judas was going to betray Jesus that Peter was going to deny Jesus and then all the apostles and the disciples were going to abandon him and Jesus was going to be brutally murdered then why did God allow why did God not take control of the situation and the answer is God's love because God's love is not in controlling the freedom and the free will he has given to you and to me but God's intense love is seen in the fact that he respects yours and mine free will freedom even if there are evil intentions look at the prodigal son in the parable the prodigal son comes and tells his father give me the share does the father utter a single word he says nothing he gives in to his son's demand he respects his decision and the free will and the freedom that he has that is how God treats you and me he respects our free will even with evil intention because his love for us is intense I happen to meet a lady in the aged home and she told me that she was deeply disturbed that her son had abandoned her but yet 
she immensely loved her son I inquired how can you love your son so much intensely when he has disowned you in an aged home she looked at me and said what is love what is true love if there is a condition what is true love if I resist when my son demanded that he wants to abandon me I saw his happiness I respected his decision and his free will to abandon me but I will continue to love him if human who are selfish have such intense love and respect for the freedom and the free will of the other God who is selfless and unconditional how much intense will his love be how much he will respect your and mine free will so my dear brothers and sisters the cross today reminds you and me of God's intense love where he allowed his son to be crushed so that we may be safe and his intense love is in the fact that he respects your and my free will even when there is an evil intention the second thing that the cross the crucifix reminds us today is the intense suffering of Jesus Jesus suffered physically lashed 39 times almost given a crown of thorns nailed to the cross intense physical pain Jesus suffered emotionally when he saw Judas denying betraying Peter denying disciples abandoning he was stripped naked spat on he suffered emotionally Jesus also suffered spiritually when in that intense pain he cried out to his father and said oh God my God why have you forsaken me the pain was intense we have all seen the movie passion of Christ and actor Jim narrates an incident when he was tied to the pillar for the scene of scourging so before the scourging skin would seen would begin he was given a metal plate on his back but one of the blows when the soldier lashed at him missed that steel shield or an iron shield and his flesh was ripped open and the, the actor says at that moment the pain was so intense of that one blow that he could not cry he could not breathe he was in such a shock that even the chains that held him had almost cut off both his hands if one blow was so intense how did Jesus take upon him almost 39 lashes so my dear brothers and sisters the crucifix reminds us of Jesus' suffering and reminds you and me that we will also suffer suffering may come to us naturally suffering may come to us because of the wrong choices we make out of the free will God has given us because of the wrong choices of people around us because of the free will they have got it from God but all have to suffer now if you and I ask ourselves why we have to suffer then the question is why did Jesus have to suffer why did Jesus have to tell his apostles and the followers and disciples if you wish to be my disciple pick up your cross and where in the Gospels did it is written or Jesus has said you follow me and your life is going to be a bed of roses if Jesus suffered his life his passion and death teaches you and me that we will also encounter suffering but Jesus accepted the suffering with faith in his father he accepted the suffering willingly and yet in the suffering 
he was in control of the situation so my dear brothers and sisters while you and i encounter suffering we need to continue to have faith in god willingly accept the cross and allow god to take control of our life and our suffering permit god to take control of our life and suffering this is yet another story of a woman named brenda she decided to go on an adventure to climb up a cliff but while she was halfway through the rope snapped hit her eye and the contact lens of her eye fell down now she knew that she was in big trouble because her vision was blurred with great difficulty she reached up she and a friend started to see around her if at all that contact lens was stuck to her body but it was nowhere in despair she sat down she called out to god and said god you are the creator of these mountains you know every way you know every path you know every rock over here help me in this blurred vision to climb down and if it is your will to get the contact lens with great difficulty she came down and there was already a group standing to climb again and at that time time one man called out and said is there any one who has lost a contact lens filled with awe and surprise she ran and took her contact lens for which she had prayed and what was most surprising where did the man find the contact lens he narrated that he saw a small ant carrying it brenda came home filled with enthusiasm told her father what was happening or what happened in the adventure her prayer the losing of the lens praying to find the lens the lens is has, has been found and the surprise of an ant carrying the lens her father was a good cartoonist and so he decided to draw this event where he drew an ant carrying the contact lens but there is something more beside that picture he wrote god why do i have to carry this weight neither can i eat nor it seems useful to me but if it is your will i will carry my dear brothers and sisters how much of depth does this story has how much of depth the cartoonist had to draw and write this message jesus at the garden of gethsemane also felt overwhelmed when he told his father take away this cup but if it is your will give me the grace to carry it let your will be done so my dear brothers and sisters when you and i carry the cross it may seem to us burdensome it may seem to us useless but it is for some one's redemption around us all we have to say is lord let your will be done just like jesus and the ant who carried the contact lens so my dear brothers and sisters the crucifix reminds you and me today of god's love intends that he allowed his son to be crushed that he respects your and mine freedom the crucifix reminds us of the intense suffering that jesus took upon him with faith in his father willingly and in a controlled situation so my dear brothers and sisters while you gaze at the crucifix today let us ask for the grace to respond to the intense love and suffering of jesus that we may sin no more that we may do no evil that we may use our freedom responsibly and when the cross or the suffering comes we have faith we willingly pick up the cross and allow god to take control of our lives my dear brothers and sisters let this not be another press another good friday service but let this good friday service today and everything that happens around us at this moment 
change our mind, our perception, our heart, our actions, the words we utter and make us a better disciple who constantly remind, who, who constantly responds to God's love and his suffering. Dear brothers and sisters, let us pause for a while, close our eyes, bow our heads in humility and allow the spirit within us to convict us and give us the grace to respond to God's intense love and God's intense suffering for each one of us. intercessions. The death of Jesus on the cross has reconciled us with the Father and with one another. United as one body in Christ, we now confidently pray to God, our Father, for our needs and those of the whole world. The priest will first announce the intentions we are invited to pray for, followed by a moment of silent prayer. The priest will then read out the liturgical prayer. At the end of his prayers, our response will be, Amen. For the Holy Church, let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that, leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Almighty ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For the Pope, let us pray also for our Holy Father, Pope Francis that our God and Lord, who chose him from the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For all orders and decrees of the faithful. Let us pray also for Cardinal Oswald, our bishop, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of faithful people. Almighty ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. For catechumens, let us also pray for catechumens, that our God and Lord, 
may open wide the ears of their innermost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord Almighty ever living God who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring increase the faith and understanding of catechumens that reborn in the font of baptism they may be added to the number of your adopted children through Christ our Lord Amen for the unity of Christians let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church Almighty and ever-living God who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered Look kindly on the flock of your son that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the Jewish people, let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant almighty ever living god who bestowed your promises on abraham and his descendants graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may attend the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord Amen. for those who do not believe in Christ let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ that enlightened by the Holy Spirit they too may enter on the way of salvation almighty and ever-living God grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart they may find the truth and that we ourselves being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life may, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through Christ our Lord Amen for those who do not believe in God let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God that following what is right in sincerity of heart they may find the way to God himself almighty ever-living God who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest grant we pray that despite every harmful obstacle all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you and so in gladness confess you the one true God and Father of our human race through Christ our Lord Amen. for those in public office let us pray also for those in public office that our God and Lord may direct their heart, minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all Almighty ever-living God in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples look with favor we pray on those who govern with authority over us 
that throughout the whole world the prosperity of peoples the assurance of peace and freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure through Christ our Lord Amen for the afflicted in time of pandemic let us pray also for those who suffer the consequences of the current pandemic that God the Father may grant health to the sick strength to those who care for them comfort to families and salvation to all the victims who have died Almighty ever-living God, only support of our human weakness, look with compassion upon the sorrowful condition of your children who suffer because of this pandemic. Relieve the pain of the sick, give strength to those who care for them, welcome into your peace those who have died, and throughout this time of tribulation, grant that we may all find comfort in your merciful love through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those in tribulations, let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive away out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand through Christ our Lord. Amen. The second part, the adoration of the Holy Cross. The second part of the service now begins. The cross is brought to the altar to be unveiled as a reminder of God's infinite love for us. In your homes, please prepare a table respectfully covered with a white cloth and place a crucifix on it with two candles on either side. At the church altar, the crucifix will be unveiled in three stages by the celebrant and the call to veneration is in tone. Please respond, O oh, come, let us adore him. Then in homes, each one present bows in veneration before the crucifix on the table. Behold, behold, the wood of the cross on which hung the Saviour of the world. O oh, come, O oh, come, and worship the Lord. O oh, come, let us worship the Lord. O oh, come, O oh, come, and worship the Lord. O oh, come, let us 
us worship the Lord. Behold. Behold the food of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. O oh, come, O oh, come, and worship the Lord. O oh, come, let us worship the Lord. O oh, come, O oh, come, and worship the Lord. O oh, come, let us worship the Lord. Behold, Behold the food of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. O oh, come, O oh, come, and worship the Lord. O oh, come, let us worship the Lord. O oh, come, O oh, come, and worship the Worship the Lord.
At the Savior's command, then formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, together, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever behold the Lamb of God Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
act of spiritual communion let us make our spiritual communion with the lord my jesus i believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament i love you above all things and i desire to receive you into my soul since i cannot now receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart i am raise you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you never permit me to be separated from you amen Let us all stand and continue to pray in silence. Almighty ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Coronavirus, Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, your graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, 
for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine be available for all our people, even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today, we have commemorated Jesus' loving self-sacrifice for our salvation. Tomorrow, we will gather again to participate in the Easter Visual Service. The most important service of the liturgical year to commemorate the resurrection of our Lord and the gift of new life as children of God. The online service of the Easter Visual Celebration in IC Church tomorrow evening presided by the parish priest Father Harry Vaz will premiere at 7.30 p.m. Besides the crucifix and side candles on a small neatly covered table, please keep ready an unlit candle for each family member to be used for the liturgy of the light, part of the service and for the renewal of baptismal vows. Please bow your head for the final blessing. May Almighty God abundantly bless, we pray. And let the blessing descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, an everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen.